Nerds. Happy Sunday. It is February 18th. And last week in our live chat, we made a call for some live chat topic recommendations. And we had a recommendation that we talk about book awards because we had mentioned that the major book awards just got released this last week. Um, I am putting a link in the description or in the discussion section um, right now for if you wanna see which books won all those awards. Um, but we thought it would be fun if we did our own very official, very, very technical and probably more important than the Prince and the Morris Awards um, award ceremony. So <laughs> we have reached out to you guys, gotten some recommendations for categories. We've come up with some of our own. Hopefully it's just going to be a lot of fun. We can talk about the books that we loved that came out last year. We're setting pretty loose rules for it. So if you have a book that came out in 2017 that you want to recommend for that award, that's ideal. If you don't have one for that category, but you did read a book that was not released in 2017 during 2017, uh, you can recommend that one. Or, you know, this isn't actually as technical as I made it sound. So you can recommend anything. We won't know the difference. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're just going to jump right in because this is going to be really well organized, as you can tell. <laughs> um, so let's start with what are you reading right now? Just warm up a little. <laughs> My kind of warm up. <laughs> um, I'm reading a few things. I'm reading um, Force of a Thousand Lanterns by Dewey C. Dow. And... Um, I'm almost done with The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, um, which is really good. And I just finished Strange the Dreamer. I listened to the audiobook for that, which was really good. So. That one is just like eternally on my TBR. I know. <laughs> it was on my TBR for so long, and I wasn't sure about it because, like, I liked Daughter of Smoke and Bone, but, like, I didn't love the whole series. But, like, Strange the Dreamer is amazing. And I really like that that whole trilogy. So I'm I was yeah. only like I'm sure I'm going to love it. I think it's really just like I can only read it for the first time once, and I just I never feel ready. Like, it's like I feel like yeah, like the other trilogy was like really good, but like she's just like really stepped it up and like oh, her storytelling yeah, like has like gotten even no. better. The writing's gotten even better. It's so good. Hmm. Um, I am currently reading Winter Song by S. J. Jones, which is our book club for. Next, next month, month, I think. So I'm getting ahead of the so game. Ahead of things. Mm -hmm. I plan to frantically pick it up in a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it's, been, it's been slow for me to get into, so I'm glad I gave myself some time. So but I like the writing style. It's just I haven't really, it hasn't really hooked me yet. So we will see. Right on. I'm reading. Who's this author? Behind You by Brian Coldrick. Um, it's one shot horror stories with like creepy illustrations oh. to go with it. And it's always something is behind the person <laughs> and it's really good and really creepy. And I want it to never end. <laughs> oh, Megan, what was that like ghost story book or like something that you were talking about last week oh, about like ghost stories in America? Oh yeah. Yeah. I have that one too. <laughs> it's ghost land by Colin Dickey. I haven't quite finished this one yet either. But it is great, and it is nonfiction, and it talks about ghost stories. <laughs> yeah, about the cultural impact of American ghost stories and stuff. It's awesome as well. That's really cool. All right, so I guess we will jump in with our first category, which is most anticipated book of 2018. We would love to hear from you guys on this one especially because... We all have the same answer, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't just different. Mm, okay. <laughs> Mine and Kelly's is Obsidio by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, hmm. I'm excited and nervous because in the last one, I don't trust them not to kill off people I care about. <laughs> At least in one and two, I always trusted that like, well, they'll probably make it to the next book. Yeah. 
I trust Amy. I don't trust you. Yeah, ex that's exactly it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust any of them. <laughs> it's going to be awesome either way. I'm so excited. Yeah. I am very, very excited for Children of Blood and Bone by Tony Adeyemi, um, which it comes out in March. Maybe like a month from today. It might even be like two weeks. I don't remember exactly, but it's really soon and I'm really excited. She was in, we were in the same Pitch Wars year, so it's like really surreal. <laughs> um, and uh, it just looks so good. The cover is gorgeous and I cannot wait. <laughs> I have pre-ordered oh Obsidio God. and Children of Blood and Bones, so I'm very excited for both of them. Um, <sighs> that almost might have been a really good transition to our next topic of beautiful book cover. Mm -hmm. so. We've got some people sharing um, their most anticipated books for this year also in the discussion section. So thank you for doing that. Um, we've got a couple of people so excited for Children of Blood and Bone and one uh, but for Hank Green's book. Oh, yes. That'll be fun. I'm very excited to read that one, too. Um, we had Cover Love next for yes. last year. Beautiful book covers from 2017. I don't know if I have, like, a clear winner. There's definitely some ones I liked. Mm -hmm. I think I would go with The Speaker by Tracy Chi. That one's beautiful. It's a really pretty cover. I love the colors. Yeah. Similarly, I love uh, Crown of Wishes by Roshni Chakshi. Um, it's beautiful. It is. Oh <laughs> I bought it just so I could have the cover, and it, like, turned out mm -hmm. great. And I also liked the book. <laughs> <laughs> That's, like, that cover is, like, one that I would want as, like, an art print to, like, hang up, like, like the girl mm. riding the horse across like With the background. The yeah. <laughs> <sighs> I really liked the cover for Eliza and her monsters, which was a contemporary and it didn't really look like a super contemporary cover, which was kind of cool. Like you still knew what it was, but it was kind of stood out for me. Um, we've got votes for Caraval and All the Crooked Saints and Winter Song for covers, which were all beautiful. Yes. I feel like the like really graphic designy looking covers are very in right now, like with the Hazelwood and stuff, and I love all of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that they're like scrolling through the list of 2017. There's more variety in cover styles than a lot too. of previous years. It's like not just like all girls shirts. and dresses. Yeah. <laughs> Which I do love a good girl in a dress cover. Oh, for sure. But when all of the books are girls in dresses, <laughs> then I can't tell any of them apart. Mm -hmm. Or when they're all just like a big symbol with the title and you're like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Uh, Ellie recommended Iron Cast, which I had forgotten about that cover, but I love that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. very pretty. Yeah. Um, so this next category we have left as clever name <laughs> for an LGBT category. <laughs> <laughs> On my notes, I put it down as Rainbow Award. So. Okay, we'll call it that. <laughs> we have a couple that have really great specific names. Yeah, <laughs> this is not one of them. <laughs> this is one of them. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to go with the book that I finished reading yesterday, which I think was published in 2016 but I'm going to count it. And that is Every Heart a Doorway by Seanan McGuire, I think. Mm -hmm. It's technically, I've seen it as adult fantasy, but all of the characters are like 17, 18. It takes place at a school for kids who have fallen like down rabbit holes into Wonderland, into Oz, and all those kids that came back from those crazy worlds. And like the main character is asexual. One of her closest friends is transgender. It is the most like inclusive book I have read in a really long time. And it was also great, so... Nice. Bonus there. 
I um I know that there was like some controversy around like the original synopsis of this one or like description of this one, but I really liked um, Ramona Blue, by Julie Murphy. Like I, it's like a really good like discussion of like the fluidity of sexuality and stuff. So, so yeah, I like that. thought it handled the topic really well. Yeah, and it's just a great book. It's really cute. I'm such a big fan of Adam Silvera that like everything he publishes, I'm always like, you, this one is my favorite. <laughs> so last year we read History is All You Left Me for one of our book clubs. And so that one's getting my vote. Adam is great. He yes. has the best everything. <laughs> I was like watching his Instagram stories right before we came on the pre-chat. <laughs> mm. <gasps> I love him. Uh, let me check the discussion section. Uh, we've got some votes for uh, Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, which I haven't read yet and I'm desperate to read. Which actually got an honor, like a Stonewall Award yeah. honor, which is the official clever name for an LGBT category. <laughs> the historically, one, <laughs> historically relevant one. Yeah. Um. We've got someone read Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda, which is an amazing book. And so then the movie comes out so soon. Oh my God. I told Kelly um, earlier that if I wasn't trying to restrict myself to 2017 books, I would have just put Simon as like every category. Mm -hmm. like, it's the best of everything. Um, we've got also got someone recommending Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, which I have not read yet but I believe that it is great. I trust Jennifer Daniels, the commenter. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much for sharing your favorite books. Please continue to do so. Yeah, uh, I'd like if you'd open and like add all of your recommendations in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have we got another category? Do we ever? Although this one, I think some of us had trouble coming up with answers for. Most likely to cause shipping wars. I got nothing. Yeah, we were talking about this in the pre-chat because there aren't as many books coming out right now, or it's not as popular right now to have books with like love triangles in them. And mm -hmm. so I don't remember reading anything that really had a love triangle in it, personally, mm -hmm. last year. Like, I read a couple things I think were like the character, like, felt attraction towards a couple people maybe but there was never any real like oh i'm in love with both and can't decide kind of thing mm -hmm. it was like i love this person but like yeah i feel some attraction towards this other person yeah. um, i did read the ship beyond time and i don't know that it would cause shipping wars but i was ready to start a war over it <laughs> because i did not i had feels about who should have gotten with whom and yeah. It yeah, didn't happen. <laughs> I was bitter. I was gonna say, like my the closest thing I can come to for this award was Wind Witch, because like in Truth Witch, like I was all about, oh yeah, this is the ship, like this is who I ship, and then the second book like made me question it, where I was like, but there's this other person who would also be really great with Safi, and now I don't know what to think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Susan's plan is. I can't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I also read um. I know it came out not last year, but I read Six of Crows last year. And so that whole book I spent just like, well, I could ship any of these characters with any of these characters. <sighs> Anything in the comments? Or we move into the next one. Let's move on to the next one. All right, the Ugliest Cry Award. What do we get? I read We Are Okay. Oh. Oh, no, which one's that? I don't. We Are Okay Nina by Nina LaCour, um, which I believe also won one of it the- It won the Prince Award. Real awards. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't even an um, honor, it won the Prince Award. I was so happy for her. <laughs> and it, like, I started crying on page two and I did not stop crying until the end because it like, I don't know, it was weirdly applicable to my own life and like it hit some chords of like 
emotions that I had never really dug into before. And like, I loved it so much that I put the book down and immediately went and emailed Neil LaCour to be like, I love your book so much. It was so important wow. to me. Mm -hmm. And I've never like done that before. <laughs> but like, so I cried good. for hours reading it. Mm -hmm. Um, I would probably say Dear Martin by Nick Stone. It was super mm. emotional and like frustrating at times, but also like the whole like second half of the book was like really difficult and lots of emotions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't read a lot of emotionally heavy stuff last year. Like I didn't read much at all. So I kind of saved it for the Mm -hmm. This is going to be an escape and make me feel nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's part of why, like, We Are Okay caught me off guard. Because almost everything I read last year was, like, either nonfiction or contemporary mm -hmm. romances. But also and... was, like, not what I was expecting from Nina LaCour. Because, like, the other things I've read by her have been, like, sweet romances. Yeah, and, like, I read, like, like everything novel romance. to you. <laughs> so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't know anything about it. I was just like, oh, I like Nina LaCour. This is her next book. Mm -hmm. I was like, everyone's talking about it, and I already like her writing, so <laughs> I'll read it. And it was yeah. full of feels. Lots of feels. <laughs> All <laughs> the feels. Um, so definitely to those of you asking in the comments if for books that you would like to try reading that might make you cry. Definitely try We Are Okay. It might. <laughs> or maybe yeah, it just was a right book, right time sort of thing for me. We'll find out. Um, Flautus58 read Hunger Games last year and it gave them feels. Um, maybe a Shipping Wars book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dark Deluxe Full cried while reading Luna, which I don't, I'm not familiar with that book. Me neither. Um, but I'm going to look it up now. Um, Amanda B said, everything, everything gave me some serious feels. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I read that one last year, though. No, that one was ago. The book, or the movie came out last year, though, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next up. Yep. Next up, we have the Umbridge Award, Most Hated Villain. Oh. <laughs> I actually read Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix last year, so. <laughs> so you say Umbridge. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to say um, Lord Gargaron in the Court of Fives trilogy by Kate Elliott. He's just like a super hateful person. You know, like, basically yeah. tries. He, he seals the main character's mother and sisters in a tomb to die, so <laughs> he's pretty terrible. Seems like a bad person. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I had like a really just fingernails on a chalkboard level of hatred for any villain that I read last year, which is possibly why last year was not a great year for books for me. <laughs> I need to read Court of Fives. <laughs> I read all three Court of Five books in a row this year and highly recommend. Yes. And also, if you're looking for that, I think you probably will like Strange the Dreamer because, like, the antagonist oh, in yeah. that was like driving me crazy for the whole book. Yes. And, like, She's a great antagonist because you like understand why she's the way she is, but you're also like, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> please do not. <laughs> you're making things worse. Um. All right, I'm seeing discussion happening in the comments, but not any recommendations for the Umbridge Award. So shall we move on to the next one? All right, the next one is technically our like genre-based award, so I think we're gonna come back to that. Okay. Uh, 
On to clever name for a book that made you desperate for the sequel. <laughs> I, know we, I know we kind of gave it one now, but I like these better. I'm just going to call these the clever name awards. Yeah. <laughs> we are great at this. I... So actually, for this award and for one of the other ones that we're going to do later, I had like two books that I couldn't decide between for both of them, and it's the same two books, which is weird. But because um, mine were Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare, because it ends in a huge cliffhanger, which I was very upset about. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is basically just how Cassandra Clare books are. Um, they always end in awful ways. <laughs> uh, but also um, Winter Song by S.J. Jones, and that was mostly because I didn't know that it had a sequel. I thought it was a standalone book, so I was really <laughs> upset when I finished it. <laughs> then I found out there was a sequel, so I'm very happy that there's another <laughs> book because I was going to be really angry and never trust JJ again with a book. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like multiple people contact me after reading that book, like, just so you know, it has a sequel. <laughs> Don't read it thinking it's a standalone. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> For me, I went with Crooked Kingdom in terms of one that, like, I would have loved to spend more time with those characters. And I think there are still interesting stories to tell with those people in that world. Maybe not in the same setup. I don't know. She ended it in a good place, but I would have totally been down for more. Mm -mm. Also, so I could buy more of those hardcovers. Yes. Yes. So pretty. Of all the colors we could have had if she had written more. <laughs> <laughs> I read The Girl from Everywhere last year, and that was the only book that I read last year where I also read the sequel that like had a sequel out already. Huh. Um, even though I read like Six of Crows last year, <laughs> for some reason that was the one that like I saw the sequel and I was like, I need that. <laughs> So that one was the one. It was very good, I thought. Yeah. Normally sequels haven't been pulling me in as much lately, but that one it felt like there was story to tell, that like it wasn't just like having a sequel for the sake of having a sequel, but also felt like it was just expanding the world. Like it wasn't a repeat of the first one. And, like, the problems were different from the first one. So I liked it a lot. <laughs> Heidi has me sold. I will read all of her books. <laughs> I'm so excited for her new book. Yes. They just released the cover, right? Yeah. It's so pretty. It has a dragon on it. Yes. Um... So next we've got most shocking plot twist. I'm trying not to over explain what it is we're talking about for spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we will not spoil anything. So this is the one award that I'm like really cheating in using a book that I did reread last year, which is The Raven Boys. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Because I feel like that is the plot twist that consistently, when like I get people to read that book, they're always surprised by it. Which is so funny because like uh, they know <laughs> the twist. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, like everyone is surprised by it, and everyone loves the twist. You know, like there's like some twists that like not everyone loves or that not everyone's surprised by, but like everyone is surprised by and thinks it's a brilliant twist. So. Mm -hmm. Except for Kaylin, who got spoiled on it, but that was a whole different thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, for this one I put down Gemina which I read last year um, All every book in that series so far has managed to have a twist that shocked me and I thought because I was so familiar with Illuminae that Gemina wouldn't be able to really shock me in the ways that Illuminae did but then I got to that part and it was just like all right, everything was turned on its head again, mm -hmm. and I was just like swearing at Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff in the middle of the night in my bed. <laughs> like, how did you do this again? That book would have been a great Umbridge Award winner because the villain is awful. 
That's true. true. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I really read any plot twisty book, well, many plot twisty books last year, so I can safely go for One of Us is Lying and recommend you all read that in the next week, just to kind of throw that out there, because that's our book club. <laughs> so, but we will not overly discuss that now, but just you wait. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to talk about it a lot week. next Sunday because <laughs> I have some feels. <laughs> Diddle. <laughs> Anything on the comments on this one? Uh, we've got The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson. Apparently had a couple of really good plot twists. Um, we had a question about The Girl from Everywhere. Um, that is the name, and the author is Heidi Heilig. I'll put it in the description. Um, if you're just coming in, we are doing a chat just about book awards, just talking about books, because that's what we do best. Um, there were official book awards this week, the Prince Award, the Morris Award, all of those <laughs> were <laughs> awarded this week. There's a link much higher up in the discussion from us if you want to check out those real awards. Um, and we are just making up our own categories and running with it. So feel free to share any of your books that fall under the categories that we are sharing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we had a question. Has anyone read Blood Rose Rebellion? I haven't. I, I, haven't, list, but I, I was looking at it for the cover category. I'm like, oh, that's so pretty. I should read that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The author was in Aaron's Pitch Wars year. So mm -hmm. I believe Aaron has read it. I but she's her. one more Sunday in her hiatus. Maybe two more Sundays. I don't know if she's coming back for book club. She's been raising a small human. <laughs> She's read a book at least. So. Oh, okay. Then maybe she will be back next week. <laughs> um, Jennifer Daniels recommended China Dolls by Lisa C. Um, has three main characters who learn a lot about each other after being friends for years that were quite surprising. Um... What is our next category? Oh, this one I have so many like actual options for, and that is best standalone. I read a lot of contemporary mm -hmm. last year, so yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go uh, with the upside unrequited by Becky Abertali because I loved it. I did love that one. I'm gonna go with Devils Within by S. F. Hinson, which is a great book. <laughs> For me, um, this one was a toss up <laughs> and I keep switching back and forth because one, um, The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. I read last year and absolutely loved. It's beautiful and adorable and everything. Um, but I also really, really loved Geekerella. <laughs> I'm so good. Like, I so love them for options. different reasons. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. like The Sun is Also a Star was one of those books where like you read it and your entire creative well just feels filled at the end of it. While mm -hmm. Geekerella, like I read it and it made all the nerdy parts of me feel so happy. <laughs> those were both on my short list. Yeah, book. so good. So many great contemporaries last year. Um, Annie read We Are the Ants last year and loved it. Ellie recommended Invictus by Ryan Groudon. Um, Olivia liked Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. Flautist 58 loved A Place No One Knows by Brenna Yovanoff. We've got a Yay Geekerella from MC Silver. I did. I think I read We Are the Ants two years ago, but I did love that one as well. I have not read 
Invictus or a place no one knows. But I do like Brenna Yovanoff, so I would probably like Brian Browden, but I haven't read <laughs> Invictus. <laughs> This is bad for my TBR. It's just getting it way is. longer. <laughs> like, wow, all these books are award winners now. <laughs> <laughs> Very officially. Yes. We need big stickers to put on books for next year. <laughs> <laughs> it's just our faces. Um, <sighs> all right, next up. Best book that made you literally laugh out loud. So I feel kind of weird about my choice because it's one that also could have been in the Ugliest Cry Award and it's not like a funny book, but I laughed a lot because there's definitely funny parts and that's The Hate You Give. Mm. Like that was the one book yeah. I could remember like laughing out loud at certain parts of it. Not the sad parts. Not the How parts of book not come up yet? Right? Know, right? <laughs> I think it says it was early 2017. So yeah. I and I read it the year before, so it's not on the green page that I'm looking at. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It just does such a good job of like balancing like the sad and the funny. Like you're like crying one page and then like laughing the next, and it's a whole roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then you're angry the next page. Like so many things. Um Last year I read, and it did come out in 2017, Big Mushy Happy Lump, which is the second Sarah Scribbles comic collection. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Made me very happy. <laughs> I read, this was, I was definitely laughing out loud a lot, but a lot of it was like WTF laughing out loud. <laughs> but I read Kill the Boy Band last year yes. by Goldie Lodowski. And it was just like so weird and creepy. And it deals with like, like stands basically um, for this fake One Direction band where they try to kidnap one of the members and accidentally murder him. So weird. <laughs> and it's all like unreliable narrator stuff. Yes. It's so weird. <laughs> but it had me laughing so much because it was just like, what am I even reading? What is happening? You're like laughing, but you feel really uncomfortable the whole time. <laughs> Uh, like nervous laughter, just like. <laughs> uh, man, yeah, that's a strange book. It's like good but weird. Yeah, it was unlike anything I've ever read before. <laughs> it's like one of those things where like the main character thinks she's the normal one, and the whole time you're like, <laughs> no, <laughs> none of you are normal. Yeah. Um. Uh, we had a question for the what award that was. This was the book that made you literally LOL. Um, on to the next. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. The sci-fi or fantasy world you would be most likely to survive in. <laughs> I none. Yeah. <laughs> I decided on Crown of Wishes because I probably would still die because the odds are really bad because only like one person lives. But <laughs> it's based on like wits and like intelligence and not like physical strength. Like I would never survive the Hunger Games. But I'd maybe have a fighting chance in Crown mm. so. I gotta go with um, Magic in My Bones by Kelly Sheridan. <laughs> <laughs> I love that world, and I feel like I would just keep to myself and no one would bother me. <laughs> That's where I'm looking at all the worlds. People are like, if I don't have to be involved in the plot, I'll probably be fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to change the subject and go with A Closed and Common <laughs> Orbit or The Wayfarer's Books by Becky Chambers. And we are reading the first book in that series in May, I think. And I love that world. It's just a very, like, standard kind of Star Trek-y sci-fi that, like, it's just people going about their lives, but with aliens and spaceships that go really fast. So <laughs> <laughs> We've got lots of recommendations 
in the discussion section for this one. We've got Ellie said the Witchlands, maybe. Okay. Um, I can do well there. Yeah. Yeah. Jennifer Daniels said Magnus Chase, as long as you die in Hotel Valhalla. I'm curious about the classes there, like Yoga to the Death. Um, <laughs> Deluxe Full said, Watford School for Magics. Um, Susan said, any sci-fi, because Susan has better survival skills than the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Susan asked, what was that book you said, Kelly? Um, I've lost it. It is A Close and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers. And then the first one is A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, which is the one we're reading in May, but they're like companions, not sequels. So it's a little spoilery to read the second one. And I did like the first one a bit better, but they are both great. Um, and I put that first book title in the discussion section as well. Uh -huh. uh, I guess we haven't technically announced our book clubs, but spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> that one's coming. <laughs> Uh, it's not that far away now. No. I'm pretty committed that we'll be reading them. Yeah. Because I've read a lot of them, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On to swooniest romance. This is the other one that I was deciding between Winter Song and Lord of Shadows because they have both have great romances. Cassandra Clare is just great at like forbidden romance that you can't help but ship. She's so good at it. And there's so many great couples. I'm pretty sure she can pick two characters I hate and make me ship them by the end of like three chapters. <laughs> <laughs> She's so, so skilled at it. <laughs> and I love that like the main couples in her books are all like kind of like forbidden romance, but all for different reasons. Like she doesn't just like repeat it. I, mm -hmm. I loved uh, I Believe in a Thing Called Love by Maureen Gu. It was like, like it wasn't anything groundbreaking about the couple themselves. Like it was very contemporary like classic romance, you know, kind of mysterious artistic boy and very like school has a plan girl. But like from page one, I was like, I ship it. I need to see this to the end. I need to know. And it's got such a fun cover too, actually, now that I'm looking at it. Um, for... Oh, Kelly, have you said yours yet? I'm trying to find one from 2017 because I, I picked Natasha and Daniel from The Sun is Also a Star for this one because I really, really love them together. But it is technically a 2016, but I think I'm sticking with it. <laughs> um, sorry, I just ate some jelly beans. <laughs> Give me one second. <laughs> Sarah, I also loved the couple in... Um... Tosh Hart's Toll Story. Mm. They're so cute. We had recommendations for Song of the Current from Ellie and Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue from Dark Deluxe Yes. A great romance. <laughs> <laughs> Another book that they just released the cover for the companion i'm assuming it is mm -hmm. companion yeah. novel it's, it's kind of a sequel the sort of sequel and they're both adorable I covers and i want both of them on my shelf <laughs> it's so great except i realized because yeah the second one is like about monty's sister felicity who's in the first book and i realized because of the cover she has like dark hair that like i pictured her as a redhead the whole time <laughs> because of the american girl felicity <laughs> yes. <redhead>. Colonial <laughs> area era redhead. So yeah. She's not a redhead apparently. Lies. <laughs> Felicity can only She's... be redhead. Yeah. Ooh. It is the law. <laughs> <laughs> All right. These next two feel like they might be a little bit similar. 
So if you have separate ones, go for it. If not, go for it. But most underrated book, so the one you think more people should be talking about, and the most defied expectations award, so the one that really surprised you with how great it was. So. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So technically the sequel came out last year, but I did reread the first one and I'll go with defied expectation. No, most underrated. Cause I, I know I love this author and this is Menagerie by Rachel Vincent, who I really, really love her adult stuff. She's got some YA stuff as well that I haven't been as in love with, but her adult stuff is just so, so good and more people should be reading them. So there's Menagerie and Spectacle and the third book in that series comes up this year. And it's like a, yeah a world with kind of not fey, but like some humans or, or I don't even know how to explain it, but it's set in a circus and it's really cool. But so yeah, there's some, like some people are magical creatures or have kind of fey type abilities and have lost all of their rights. So they're either on the run or kept in circuses to like be gawked at by humans and stuff. And the main character grew up thinking she was human until something happened. That made her realize she was not. And then she must save all the other people. Mm -hmm. So good. For underrated, so this book didn't come out last year, but I read the sequel last year, so I'm going to count it. Um, <laughs> but it's uh, Serpentine, and then the sequel is Sacrifice, mm -hmm. and they're by Cindy Pond. They're so good. Oh my gosh, not nearly enough people have read them. Yeah. Cindy Pond is amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I um, I this one did come out last year. One of the few that I've been able to recommend where it actually did come out last year. But I read Windfall by Jennifer E. Smith um, last year. And it is a contemporary about a girl whose very best friend wins the lottery. And she's also in love with him. And so that complicates things. Um, but I picked it up because the cover is beautiful and fun and my bookstore had a signed copy and I was like, well, I mean, <laughs> what am I supposed to do here? <laughs> and so I bought it and didn't really have any expectations because I hadn't heard much about it. And I liked it a lot. Um, it was just a fun romantic read, <laughs> which 2017 was the year of trying to read fun romantic things for me. Yeah. There were a lot of those. So. Yeah. A lot of contemporary romances last year. And do you feel like defied expectations? Like, it wasn't like a huge defying expectations because I already liked this author, but um, Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. Like, I normally do not like novels in verse at all, but I gave it a try because I like Jason Reynolds and it was really good. So. Mm -hmm. We've got people in the discussion section. Um, MC Silver read A Map for Wrecked Girls by Jessica Taylor and was surprised by how good it was, which that book has been on my TBR for a while. I really want to read it. I just added it to mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess it's about two sisters who are shipwrecked. Um, Ellie recommended Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow and Song of the Current by Sarah Tolser. <laughs> um, Annie recommends The Gallery of Unfinished Girls. Um, And yes, I think we are caught up on comments. <laughs> so for the last like not specific category one, I'm not sure how we can talk about this without spoilers. You just don't say who the character is. Okay, so <laughs> a bo the book with the most gut-wrenching character death. Mm. I am ready for this one because it's the book I finished today, which is Strange the Dreamer. <laughs> <laughs> I was so upset at the end of that book. Oh no. It's so 
good, but so upsetting at the end. Should have known I'm gonna Lenny go. Taylor. Yeah, for sure. I feel like she yeah. only writes tragic things. Do not trust her. <laughs> <laughs> um, not technically 2017, but I'm going to go with Crooked Kingdom. Yeah. That would hurt me a bit. It hurt me because of who was affected by it. Yeah, same. More than the actual character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I read so much contemporary last year. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll say we are okay. <laughs> I was about to say, there's a chance that we are okay. <laughs> yeah. um, that one is gut-wrenching, so. It, yeah, I ugly cried for like seven hours straight, so. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, we can't say much about any of those because yeah. spoilers. spoilers. But read them if you want your heart broken. <laughs> <laughs> if you like hurting. All right. Genre awards. So yes, on to the specific genre awards. Let's start with contemporary. <laughs> <laughs> Too many options. <sighs> Like, I feel like technically I should give it like to what I gave the best standalone, but I don't know. There were so many good ones. I want to like share the love. Exactly. I feel like I picked different contemporary books for awards. So I wasn't like re-awarding re re them. I think for best contemporary, I would say Far From far from the Tree. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Like all about adoption and family and Sibling this is killing my TBR. <laughs> so good. That one made me cry, but not ugly cry. It was like happy tears. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go Geekerella. I, I was going to go Geekerella. <laughs> uh -huh. I spoke sooner. <laughs> it was just fun, right? It was so good. Mm. It just made it me happy. I feel like it's like hard to do a really good Cinderella retelling at this point because they've been done so yeah. many times, you know, and there was nothing that was like super original about the Cinderella retelling, but like, it was so good though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and like I've read plenty of Cinderella retellings where it was like, I know what's going to happen. And so I don't care enough to read it. And this was the opposite. It was like, I know they're going to get together. And I know a few <laughs> things like this are going to happen and I need to see it play out yeah. because He's a movie star, and she's a fangirl, and they're at a yeah. con. Like, and they're all responding, but they don't know who each other are. Like, yeah. Yes. But yeah, it spoke to the fangirl, the book part of my heart that is always looking for something else that feels like that. Eliza mm -hmm. and her monsters kind of had that same effect for me, but I didn't like the ending as much as I liked the beginning, which is why Geekerella gets it, because yeah. Geekerella was just great beginning to end. Mm-hmm. <sighs> And she works at, like, a food truck. Uh, yes. It's her carriage. It's a pumpkin. Uh, it's too <laughs> everything was too adorable and too clever. <sighs> All right. So, science fiction. <laughs> I read one sci-fi last year, so it's going to Gemini. <laughs> Just so that it's not all Gemini, because I do love that book. Um, I really liked Want by Cindy mm -hmm. Pond. It was great. It's a good, like, near future apocalyptic science fiction. Um, so I'm not giving it to Gemini. I <laughs> will go with A Close and Common Orbit by Becky at Chambers, not Abertelli. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so fantasy then. Fantasy I really loved. Ooh, I haven't said this one in anything yet. Um, 
and I know it came out in 2016, but everything I read last year came out in 2016, apparently. <laughs> um, but The Call by Pat Rogaline was so, so creepy and so good. <laughs> I think my favorite fantasy is actually the book I'm reading right now, which is um, The Bear and the Nightingale. Hmm. It's, it's technically adult, but it definitely is, like, crossover. Because, like, it goes from when the main character is, like, born to when she's, like, a teenager. She's, like, 15 or 16 at the end of the book. So. Um, we read all I think age categories now, when she's so. an adult. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's really good. And it's, like, not a quick read, but it's, like, I don't know. You just, like, want to sink into it and, like, savor it. No. It's great. I will give this to the whole Court of Fives trilogy because the last one came out last year, so it legit counts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any other categories we wanted to touch? I was going to do just a final, like, everything else. We were going to do nonfiction for yeah. Megan's. <laughs> I am ready with nonfiction <laughs> recommendations. <laughs> Still nothing that came out in 2017, because, um, I mean, I guess I did read, nope, that came out in 2016. <laughs> Just kidding. I read uh, Trevor Noah's book, but that came out at the end of 2016, and I got it for Christmas and read it in 2017. Um, but yes, my favorite nonfiction read that I read last year was Smoke Gets in Your Eyes and Other Tales from the Crematory by Caitlin Doty. It was just great, and everyone who is going to die someday should read it. <laughs> um, it yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it was just great, and, like, changed my life. <laughs> and was still somehow super engaging and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I read a few nonfiction. I think my favorite was probably um, Hashtag Not Your Princess which is like a collection of um, like poems and essays and artwork and things like that from Native American women. And like, mm -hmm. there were like a couple of things in there that were just like amazing. Like there's like one poem about like girls and like dealing with sexual assault and stuff. That's just so good. So. Um. I read this year, but it came out last year. So much I want to tell you by Anna Akana, who is a YouTuber. So it starts out with some really personal stuff about the suicide of her younger sister, but it also has some really great essays about just like being a woman in a creative industry. So it was really, really mm -hmm. good. Oh, that reminds me. I read Buffering by Hannah Hart last year too. And that one was great. Um, so we do in just an everything else category. An everything else category. Anything we didn't talk about that we want to talk about. <laughs> um, the Princess Saves Herself in This One by Amanda Lovelace. It's a book of poetry and I read it last year and it was also amazing. And The Witch Doesn't Burn in This One. The sequel is coming out this year and I'm pretty sure it's coming out soon, but it was so good. And you can get a pretty good sampling of it too if you follow Amanda Lovelace on Twitter. She like always retweets people who are sharing pictures of her poems in the book and stuff. So good. Because I love science fiction specifically that has artificial intelligence in it, I loved um, Claudia Gray's Defy the Stars. Because mm. it was like a very different version of AI than I feel like I've seen in other science fiction. I'm very excited for the second book to see what happens. <laughs> um, the most random book on my list from last year that would never fit into a category is the Goats of Anarchy book. They are on Instagram <laughs> page that like they rescue goats. <laughs> and so it's a book full of pictures of adorable goats. <laughs> <laughs> You can read it in about 30 seconds, but it's great. <laughs> yes, the, um, the We Rate Dogs book came out last year, too. Oh, also so great. great. <laughs> I think it came out last year. I read it last year. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was last year. I think you're right. But Did you ever read Rhett and Link's book? 
because I didn't read No, it. I still need to. I need to buy it, but I've always gotten book money and then immediately spent it and then forgotten. Mm -hmm. um, oh, also, for anyone who has ever loved Codename Verity, The Pearl Thief came out last year, which is like a prequel about mm -hmm. Julie. And it is very I don't good. know if my heart can handle that. Yeah. It's like a very different, it's like a little like cute little mystery, but yeah, it was like the whole time I was like, but I know what happens to her. <laughs> like it's all like so happy and great. And it ends with like the war is like about to start. And I was like, no. <laughs> so run, Julie. Let her go. <laughs> but it is a, it's a good book. Elizabeth Wine is so good. I always trust her. I love her. Mm -hmm. I still need to read um, Rose Under Fire. I never read it. I liked it. It wasn't my favorite of her books, but I still really enjoyed it. Oh, that's one of the random way books that Matt has read and I have not. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got a recommendation for The Secret Diary of Lydia Bennett, which is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice from Lydia's point of view. Um, it's based on the Lizzie Bennett Diaries blog. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. the best version of Yeah, Lizzie it's, it's that Lydia's diary. Yes. Um, we've got a shout out from MC Silver to the Mental Health Love Story, Love and Other Alien Experiences by Carrie Winfrey. Um, we've got some great sci fi recommendations from back when we were talking about sci fi. Mm -hmm. Last year, um, I read the first two acts of a webcomic, uh, and it was Beauty and the Beast by Megan Kearney. And she's still like halfway through act three, so I haven't read act three because I'm waiting because I don't like reading one panel at a time. So I was like, I'm going to wait till the whole act is done. <laughs> but it is really good. It's a really great retelling of Beauty and the Beast. Yes. I've been getting really into like web series lately. Yeah. Like um the one shot horror stories book I'm reading started as like a Tumblr series. <laughs> and um so you can see like the illustrations in animated GIF form on the author's or the illustrator's Tumblr author slash illustrator's Tumblr page. That's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, with that, we've been going almost exactly an hour, so that was weird and unplanned <laughs> how that worked out. Um, did we have any final thoughts about books? They're pretty great. <laughs> they are great. <laughs> we love them. Um... Thank you so much to everyone who tuned in, who recommended their favorite books. Uh, next Sunday, we will be back here talking about our book club pick for the month of February, which is One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. Um, I think it's going to be a really solid chat. It's a quick read, um, definitely really engaging. So if you haven't read it yet, there's still plenty of time. You can go to your library or you can buy it and you would have time for it to get to your house and then read it um, before the chat. But I think it's going to be a really good one. So we would love to see you all there. And as always, we have videos every day of the week. So be sure to subscribe so you see those. And we will see you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye.